we're spending yet another lesson focusing on a particular uh, aspect of what we know about quadratic equations. Particularly, we're going to think about graphing these. We already know in some ways how to graph them. We've encountered these before. Um, but we're going to kind of do it in a more systematic way, and we're also going to lead into some other topics we're learning this morning. Now, before I thought we'd jump in, I wanted to spend a very brief moment to sort of say, why are we... Why do we keep looking at these things? Like we've been looking at them for years at this point, and you're like, "This is the." I've looked at this multiple times, and we're we're only in week four. Come on, why can't we move on to something else? And in fact, just like kind of fractions, the algebraic fractions that we looked at the other week, um, we will keep looking at these things. Now, I thought I would take a different approach rather than say, "Hey, these are all of the reasons why." These are all the the future topics that are going to deal with quadratics and continue dealing with them. I thought I would do something different and kind of illustrate why not just the course does, like it looks at quadratics over and over again, but why do the people who designed the course, why did they actually put it into the curriculum? Because this is a question I myself didn't know the answer to for a long time. So here's the way I think this would make sense the best, right? Of all of the functions that we deal with, we spend a lot of time on polynomials like straight lines, right? We learned about these like a long time ago, um, way before quadratics and just they're simple objects. Um, we've also very briefly looked at when you have really high powers, like if you've got a cubic or a quartic when the power at the front is not x, x squared but x cubed or x to the power of 4. We're going to spend more time looking at those as well. But then we have right in the middle of here, there's this little interesting spot, these quadratics. Now why would this be the spot that we spend lots of time and attention on? Why do we spend more time graphing these and um, analyzing them than any other kind of these other sorts of functions, okay? Okay, now we, we often spend a lot of time on how many kinds of answers are there to these kinds of things. And I think that's actually a really wonderful spot to jump off on because if I can show this to you again, this is about graphing, so I want to show this to you visually. If you think about straight lines, they're actually, such simple objects that they're in a sense boring. Like you can know every single thing about one of these kinds of objects um, from fairly early on. There's only really a handful of things to know. How steep is it? Like which direction is it facing? And then potentially, you know, where does it hit your two axes? And that's kind of it, full stop, right? I suppose you, if you want to be really interesting, you could put two of them on a graph and you could solve them simultaneously. But it ends up being the same kind of problem. Like there's nothing extra interesting about these. and because straight lines are so simple, there are very few um, actual like, natural phenomena that are modeled really well by straight lines. Things in real life often don't like to go in straight lines. But for things that go in curvy lines, good morning. What's the time, miss? Thank you. When you have a look at the other end, right, when you go past quadratics, when you think about all these other wiggly, weird graphs which have higher powers, they start to become too complex to deal with in like our time frame. You start to have to deal with, like you need computers to actually analyze these things and work out where the solutions are. Tools that we don't really either have access to or don't want to devote the time to, like we have so many other interesting things within the course to spend time on. Now, to show you what I mean by how difficult this is, right, why they're they're awkward and um, gross to deal with, right? Think back to when you're dealing with quadratic equations, when you can't factorize something, when you don't want to complete the square, we have a nice neat way of just arriving at the probably two solutions you're going to expect. What is that method? It's not factorizing, it's not completing the square, it's... Rasen, yeah? It's, yeah, the quadratic... Uh, the quadratic formula, thank you, right? When we're dealing with quadratic equations, we use the formula to then solve it. And of course, we know the formula pretty well by now, right? Now, fun fact, this is the quadratic formula, right? And you turned into the other formula. There are formulas for the other kinds of equations too. For example, there is a cubic formula. So if I gave you, if I gave you a cubic equation like this, uh, oops, that's a three. So this is just like one of the uh, quadratic equations that we've dealt with a lot, but it's just like a little bit more complicated. Just a little bit. Like there's only one extra term, okay? Watch what happens to the formula and its complexity when we just add one term. This is the quadratic formula. This monstrosity is the cubic formula. Now you can see why we don't make you learn this thing, right? What would be the point? Like it is just insanely complicated and it's not just insanely complicated even if you could solve this thing which you actually can right I just <laughs> I love the look on your face um, even if you can solve this thing by the time you get to the end of it you're like really what was the point what extra did we learn let me give you an example 
I said, you know, if I gave you a cubic formula. So here's a cubic formula, and I've actually put some numbers in. Okay, so it's like one lot of x cubed, no x squared, that many x's, that's a constant term on the end. Okay, now if you took that gross looking cubic formula that I just showed you, and you take these numbers and put them in, okay, this is the graph that we, you can put this into Desmos so you can see what happens, right? So you should be able to get some answers out of this. But then something really weird and bizarre happens, right? Just have a look at what has just occurred, right? The cubic formula, let me just go back. The cubic formula has all of these, whoops, I've gone too many, has all of these cube roots and then it's got uh, square roots underneath the cube roots, right? So it's this awful object, okay? Now when you substitute everything in and simplify it all out, you get this on your first line. Now can anyone tell me anything weird about this particular line? It's not a typo. Yeah? Yeah, there are negative numbers, two of them, or the same one twice, underneath the square root. And apparently, well, in our world, the world we've been working with, you're not supposed to do that, right? You're supposed to say, at that line, no real solutions. Right? That's what you're supposed to say, okay? But it just so happens there are a bunch of Italian mathematicians back in the 1500s and 1600s. They were willing to ask the question, well, what if, what if you could do that? They went ahead and they gave that thing a name, right? And I'm not going to get into that at the moment. They had to develop though, a whole new field, a whole new branch of mathematics to deal with these objects, to give it a name, and then to like, work out what answers you get out of it. Um, it gets even more complicated. Like, I don't know if you know what double the cube root of 5 root 5 times cos of a third of 10 inverse of that number is, right? You're like, this is so awful. This is terrible. There's, by the way, a lot of lines of working between here and here to try and work out how do I, how do you work out the cube root of a number that doesn't even exist? What is up with that, right? And then after all of that huge amount of work, surprise, surprise, after feeling so anxious, you get an answer like this. And that's exact, by the way. You can actually put all of that into your calculator, and it's not even an approximation. There it is, right over there. Can you see on my graph? Like, do you see where 4 is? Can you just make it out? I know the, um, the scale is a bit small. But there it is. It's the third solution along, right? And you're like, what? I had to invent a whole new branch of mathematics and do all of this incredibly fine detailed work. I actually got this question wrong like seven or eight times when I was solving this for myself before I arrived at the proper solution. And then you do all of that for this, okay? Do you see now why we love quadratics, right? They are sufficiently complicated that there's some interesting behavior to investigate, but they're sufficiently simple that we don't have to mess with all of this and it's a bit of a disaster, okay?